Hello everybody, this is a uh, follow-up on the previous video where I had uh, some improvement points that I needed to make, uh, especially to the uh, engine part of uh, my RV7. Uh, it were mainly, the four big points were the, uh, the cylinder head temperatures, specifically from the first two cylinders because they are uh, really close to the air duct, air intake, so they, uh, the cylinder head temperatures get really cool, too cool I think. Uh, second is the, uh, the inlet temperature of the engine. So the inlet air temperature of the engine, I, I just suck up the air from, the, uh, from under the cowl, which, uh, which is partly cool air that is used to cool the cylinders. Um, so the, the um, theory was that the input air was too high, the air temperature, and that's actually true. I uh, measured it and it was about 23 to, uh, to 25 to 30 degrees hotter than outside air temperature. So I needed to cool that. Uh, of course, the exhaust system, because it was, uh, it was cracked and broken, and uh, the uh, cabin heat, uh, cabin heating, I also needed to do that. So those were the four major points, so I'll uh, show you the results. Uh, first, the, uh, the first uh, two cylinders, they, uh, they had uh, two uh, low temperatures, so I, made a, I already said I wanted to make a kind of a ramp on the inside, so that it's kind of flowing the air over the first, partly over the first two cylinders. So here you can see the result. So this is on the, uh, on the, the right side, passenger side. So this is cylinder head number one, and I made a, a small ramp over it. I, I guessed, I guesstimated the, uh, the size, and I thought I can trim it down if it's, uh, if it's not good enough, but actually this, this is perfect. Now it, it's, it's just the same cylinder temperature as the other cylinders, so that's good. It was kind of a guess, but uh, yeah, I did it correctly. Also, I made the, uh, the total uh, baffles removable. These were actually all riveted, and uh, there was also a small point I needed to uh, improve. And uh, now I can remove the baffles, which is necessary to torque the uh, cylinder head bolts. On the left side, similar. Uh, it's a little different uh, ramp because uh, the, the second cylinder is, of course, a little bit more aft. But uh, it's similar. It's also the same size. And uh, yeah, this works uh, perfect. So that's good. Um, yeah, that's the first thing. So the, uh, the second improvement was the, um, the temperature of the, um, of the engine, the inlet air temperature. Uh, it normally took the air from the... Um, from the cowl, and now I've uh, made a, a different uh, solution. So uh, the air input temperature uh, air is here. It comes from this one, and now I made a special box, as you can see. It's uh, it's this box over here. This box. Uh, it's actually a normal UL Power air filter cooling box, but I've modified it. So I made another side on it. This one here, the, the primed one. I made that, and. Um, the air filter is in there, so it gets the cool air from there. It is fed by two uh, the bleed off uh, air from the um, from the baffles. So I have the engine baffles. I made a hole in there on both sides, and uh, that one is feeding this box in there, and that one feeds the uh, the engine. So that's good now um, because this temperature is now only seven degrees higher than the outside air temperature, which is perfect. Um, and still the engine is cooled. I, I checked it and uh, there is no noticeable uh, change in the uh, cylinder head temperature. So that's good. Uh, so this works. I don't need uh, an extra knuckle ducts or something like that, which was, uh, well, which was one of the ideas. Also, and maybe I can show that from the, uh, from the other side. I created a um, an extra feed or extra cooling to the uh, regulator. So my regulator wasn't cooled, uh, and now I, uh, on this box, I made an extra flange that goes to a uh, special uh, casing I made for the regulator. And now the regulator is also actively cooled with that same air. And going to the, uh, the heating, so that same box again here, uh, it, uh, it also gets air, cool air, goes to the, uh, the the exhaust muffler, uh, which heats up the air, and that goes here and is going to the, um, the heat box for, uh, for the cabin heat. And of course, here's the uh, release for the uh, excess air. 
Um, there's one more thing. I also added an extra uh, flange here, uh, just in case if it wasn't, if either the uh, temperature of the cylinder heads would come too high, or if I just wasn't enough to get enough cool air. So I made an extra flange uh, in case I needed more air, then I can connect the hose here and make a knocker duct on the bottom of the, um, of the cowl. But I don't think I have to do that. This is just uh, extra if I really need it, but I don't think I need it. So that's okay. Last point was the, um, the exhaust system. As you know, I, uh, I lost part of my exhaust system and uh, my, uh, my system also, also got cracked. So I discussed this with uh, UL Power and they said that uh, it might be a good idea to get a flexible piece of flexible exhaust tubing in there. So that's what I did. So I modified the, uh, the standard 3-in-1. Three, uh, three so this is a standard UL Power 3-in-1. It gets uh, three of the exhaust pipes from the cylinders into one exhaust pipe system. Uh, here, here is normal a flat pipe, but I removed it with, uh, and made a, a flexible pipe solution on it. This is the smallest one I, I could find, and that's necessary because I don't have too much space here. Well, I, I have a lot of more space than a normal Lycoming setup, but still, uh, space is precious, so I, uh, I took a small one. I welded that on, uh, on this 3-in-1, and um, there is a standard uh, UL Power exhaust system. The only thing I did, is, which, which is not really created by UL Power, is this, this um, system to connect the exhaust pipes to the uh, engine mount. I looked at the way that the standard Vans kits do it, and they use this system with, with piping and tubing. And uh, that looked very stir sturdy to me, so I, uh, I created that same uh, system. It is, uh, it's flexible, uh, but still very strong. And uh, as you can see, the flexible pipe can, uh, can do can fix up a lot. So I hope now the, these three-in-one boxes are kind of safe and these uh, flanges are no longer going to be uh, cracked. If it turns out they still crack, because, you know, whatever, because I don't think it's a very, um, it's, it's very thin material. Uh, what I will do is I will just make my own three-in-one and, uh, and solve it that way. But I hope this one uh, will at least uh, be working for another uh, 50 hours or something like that. So we'll, uh, we'll look into that. Okay, I'm going to continue the rest of my uh, annual maintenance check and uh, yeah, finish it. And then continuing flying my pie in the sky. <laughs>